Out of the many wonderful phenomena known to chemistry, one of the most colorful ones is chemiluminescence, which as the name implies, involves generating light via chemicals. While there are quite a few chemicals known to exhibit this behavior, such as those in fireflies and glow sticks, one of the more popular and well-known ones is luminol, also known as 3 amino thalhydroside. Luminol is used primarily in the field of forensics, due to undergoing a reaction when brought in contact with an oxidizing agent, usually a solution of hydrogen peroxide in water, which is sped up by the iron present in the blood via hemoglobin. This makes it easy for investigators to detect trace amounts of blood, and even wipe away blood stains. The info provided by luminol can be very useful in initial investigations. Crime solving aside, luminol's reaction also makes for a really cool demonstration of chemiluminescence. In this video, let's take a look at the reactions involved in synthesizing luminol, as well as the intuition behind the reaction that gives it its intriguing glow. Luminol can be synthesized in a two-step process, starting with the solution of 3-nitrophthalic acid in high boiling solvent like glycerol, will first add hydrazine while heating. This gets rid of the hydroxyl groups by evaporating them as water and turns the nitrophthalic acid into nitrophthalohydrazide. Finally, we'll just reduce the nitro group to an amino group by introducing a reducing agent such as sodium dithionide. Of course, this is only a simplification of the actual process required to carry out the synthesis, but well, I'm not a chemist. So I'd suggest you check out the videos made by people like Nylred and Nerdrage if you're interested in that. Before diving into the mechanism of this reaction, I just want to give a disclaimer that there have been many proposals for the mechanism and are all pretty complex. I've tried my best here to present a simplified version of the most commonly accepted version of events. But if you're interested in learning more and getting into the absolute nuts and bolts of the reaction, I've linked a few papers describing research done on it in the description. With that said, the mechanism of the luminal reaction is in essence a four-step process. First, the compound is deprotonated, creating a doubly negative charged ion also called a dianion. Then, to make the molecule relatively more stable, there's a rearrangement of electrons resulting in what's known as a keto-enol tautomerization. Following this, oxygen produced from the dissolution of the activator in water attacks, and with the N2 molecule being really stable and thus a good leaving group, it, well, leaves, leaving behind an energetically unstable version of 3 amino thalamine. And finally, the part that gives luminol its characteristic blue light, this excited 3-APA, relaxes after a bit, and in the process releases a photon with a blue wavelength of about 425 nanometers. Now, being the curious mind you are, you might be thinking at this point, hold on a second, why exactly did the molecule need to emit the photon in the first place? To answer that, we'll have to go back to the third step of the reaction, when the nitrogen is released due to an attack by the oxygen released from the activator. You see, when the oxygen molecule attacks, it forms an intermediate endoperoxide, with the oxygen atoms attached to opposite carbon atoms. Due to electrostatic forces, the bond between the oxygen atoms begins to weaken and stretch, gradually increasing the energy of the molecule due to the bonded electrons being more energetic than normal and wandering around the oxygen atoms. Before the bond breaks, the molecule's electronic configuration is in a triplet state. Now, as you can see from this diagram, known as a Jablonski diagram, the energy gap between the excited triplet and excited singlet states is relatively small. When the oxygen-oxygen bond eventually breaks, the energy of the molecule rises to what's required for the excited singlet state, and in doing so, is able to perform an intersystem crossing, which basically means a previously unpaired electron flips its spin and becomes paired. Over time, the electrons settle down around the oxygen atoms, and due to now being less excited, release the excess energy in the form of the blue photon. 
This might seem like a bit of an oversimplification, but that's basically the gist of what's happening. I've linked a few papers in the description if you want a more in-depth explanation. That's all for now though, I hope you enjoyed watching the video, and thank you for watching.